going to jump right in to things. Um, Lee, what are we talking about today? So selling the service. The idea is, I mean, we've got this fantastic technology that, that most of you are familiar with. It's, it's, it's useless unless you put it into a location, stock it with fresh food, and people are actually able to buy from it. So the idea is how do you get to your first location or how do you sell this into a workplace, a hospital, a gym, an apartment building? And we've got a ton of experience doing that, which we'll get into. Um, so we want to help you, give you the tools to feel confident getting, getting a, a biotechnology fridge stocked with your food into your first location. Excellent. So let's dive in. I'm going to share my screen. And we are off to the races. All right, so once again, this is not meant to be uh, just a, a boring webinar where we drone on with tips and tricks. We really want it to be engaging. So please guys, as you have questions, um, add them to the Q&A and we will certainly touch on them throughout. But let's dive right in. Why don't, so I think now over the last 12 months, more than 12 months, almost 14 months now, we've all been through a pretty crazy time with the pandemic many offices moving to work from home in that period. But I, I want you to speak to why is right now and really over the next six months such a unique opportunity for everybody on this call. I would love to, man. <laughs> I am, there is so much opportunity. I'm crawling out of my skin right now. These fridges with your food should be, should be placed in every one of these locations that we're gonna be talking through today. It is a really unique time to be involved in the micro retail space because it's it's total greenfield out there. There's so many businesses that are that are thinking through and scrambling um, their return to office strategies. And what they need to do is attract employers back. And there's fewer options than ever before. Um, catering companies. Uh, many are out of business, but the, the traditional idea of catering where you've got family style meeting or family style eating. And you're and speaking the, of office catering. Office catering, yeah. Uh, where people come up and, and serve themselves and go back to their desk. That's no longer viable. Where everything needs to be unitized going forward just to, to limit exposure um, and, and make employees as, as safe as possible. So there's fewer options. And um, these employers are, are thinking through like, how do I attract employees back to the office? Uh, how do I keep it safe? I don't want employees going up and down elevators uh, with, with people that are working in, the, in other offices. Um, so food delivery is, is going to be tough. And a big piece is some of these larger offices that one time had cafes, they may no longer be viable because they were profitable at maybe 80, 90, 100% capacity in the office. And when employers don't even know when their employees are coming into the office, maybe they're coming back two or three or four days a week, but they don't know which days people are coming in, those, those cafes may no longer be profitable and, and ultimately shut down. So replacing those with one or two bite refrigerators stocked with your fresh food is a, is a fantastic and affordable alternative. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, great. So Lee, why should we listen to you? <laughs> that is a good question. <laughs> that makes you an expert here. So um, prior to bite technology, we launched a company called Bite Foods where we sold very similar to what you guys are doing or, or exploring. We sold a fresh food service into offices, apartment building lobbies, uh, hospitals, fitness centers, universities. We sold that service into more than 500 locations in the Bay Area alone. So I've had so you've those, done this before? I've done this before. Okay. I, I've done it for years. <laughs> and um, I know the talking points as to you. But, um, and, and the important points to touch on, who to talk to, and that's kind of what I, I wanted to share with you today. Excellent. Okay, so first, um, would love to pull and see who is joining today, just so we can, again, um, deliver the most relevant content. So tell us about you. How would you describe yourself or your business? Are you an entrepreneur just getting started in the space? Um, a small business that's curious about this retail channel? Are you an existing client? Are you a larger enterprise? And don't be shy, this will be anonymous. Can we vote? <laughs> we can't vote, no.
All right, let me end the poll and share the results. And share the results. Okay, there we go. Uh, so a number of you are entrepreneurs. Um, also a number of you are small businesses. Um, and we've got some existing bike clients on the call, which is fantastic. Hi guys. And somebody who fits in that other bucket. <clears throat> so we'll really focus moving forward and, and this is the right audience is um, for those of you who are entrepreneurs or small businesses, how do you actually go about entering this? What is, it's a completely new channel, right? When you look in the past, there's, there wasn't really a channel for fresh bending uh, because the technology wasn't there, but Byte has changed that. Um, so fantastic. Thank you guys for sharing who you are. And I'll just add, we, we're entrepreneurs ourselves and we started with a single fringe, grew that over three years into, into 500 locations. So this, this absolutely can be done. Wonderful. Okay. So I think hopefully Lee's uh, premise on why now in particular to look at this channel uh, helped provide context. But I, I think I would just want to reiterate, reiterate that COVID aside, selling fresh food in offices of really of any size is an untapped opportunity. There are well-established solutions for very large offices that, have, that want to have a cafeteria, um, or what to have you know have the deep pockets to cater, but everybody else, you know, the 99% of businesses that don't fit in those two categories, really have not had until today a good way to bring fresh food into their offices. Um, that's huge. That is a massive market. That's that's if you just look at mid-size to large offices, that's over 200,000 offices alone in the United States. Um, and something that Lee will speak to is that this isn't a solution that's just for offices. We'll focus on that today, but it's a solution for hospitals and apartments and um, gyms, community centers, government offices, you know, a pretty broad swath of, of locations. Okay, so why would offices even be interested in talking to you about fresh food? Why do they care? Yeah, so b before Byte, there were very few options available to employers. There was, there was traditional vending or nothing. And um, there's, there's companies like Facebook, Twitter, Square, that, that they've kind of figured it out. They have got deep pockets and they are willing to spend millions of dollars a month to feed and just give away fresh food to their employees. And, and, and we all know these are not, they're not dummies. There's a clear return on investment here. Their team is more productive, they're happier, they're healthier, and uh, they're very successful. But for the majority, 99%, like Megan mentioned, majority of companies out there, they can't afford to do something like this. So they have very few options, but that's changing. And with, with this technology and your fresh food, they can place a, a fridge into a location, or you can place a fridge into one of their offices, stock with fresh food. And it's important to, to focus on or to, to reiterate to the client that their employees are buying the food. Yes, they can through the technology, they can subsidize the cost of food, but the employees are actually buying the food and then they've got this fantastic amenity um, that, that allows them to be more productive, to stay in the office during lunch and, and ultimately be healthier. Great. Okay, so another quick poll. Um, where are you at in in this process? Are you currently selling into locations? Are, do you already have your first location? Um, or are you just kind of curious and wanting to know what this would look like? So let me publish this poll. Oh, hey, while oh, they're doing that, can you log into your account here? So I can see the Q&A. Okay. Alrighty. So where are you at in your location sales process? And again, this is anonymous. Okay, so let's end the poll and share the results. So about half of you are um, have are either dedicated or have somebody on your team dedicated to sales. The other half are still exploring if this is a channel that you should pursue. Um, we have a few that have landed pilot locations and are looking for more. 
And then, um, and then several of you are looking to add to your sales team. So fantastic, this is great. All right, so what are we talking about next, Lee? So we're this gonna talk- the, this is, And this is where we'll spend the bulk of our time. This is where the rubber meets the road, as they say. So who do you sell to? How do you make that sale? And ultimately, what are you selling? And that's, that's kind of your time to shine when we talk about, or when you're talking about the food. So primarily we talked about this, but workplaces are, are just a massive opportunity right now. As people come back to the office, uh, more and more offices are opening back up in, in states as well. There's some that never closed, Texas, Florida, but uh, California, uh, the governor here has talked about June, mm -hmm. New York, they're talking about July yeah. in terms of reopening and, Fully and, reopened, as they say. and giving employers confidence for people to come back to the office. But hospitals, certainly they never closed. I think they're going to, the opportunity there is going to expand as more guests are able to, to mm -hmm. go into the offices. Uh, universities, certainly students are going to be coming back in the fall. Uh, apartment buildings as a secondary opportunity, those are, that's a really interesting opportunity because so many people are moving into less urban locations where these apartments are, I mean, at one time they had amenities like, like gyms and pools and business centers that have all shut down, but certainly rents have not changed. So, or at least come down. So an amenity like this is, is fantastic for them to, to both attract new residents, but also to retain those people that are thinking about, um, that are thinking about leaving. Mm -hmm. uh, these work for hotels, gyms, certainly in airports and other high traffic locations. So mm -hmm. that's where we're gonna focus today. So who do you reach out to? Who do you get in contact with when, you, when you're trying to make that sale? So in workplaces- and, and yeah, specifically, I think for this, and then we'll actually walk through a sales deck on what you could present to um, one of these. We're really doubling down, focusing in on what the pitch would like, look like for an office. So from here on out, put your, your you know, the hat on for selling to an actual office. So when you call the front desk or when you're looking on, on LinkedIn, what are the titles, the job titles that you're going to be searching? We've seen the most traction with facilities managers, office managers, certainly. HR is big right now because they are the ones that are kind of thinking through how to get, a, how to get employees back into the office. Um, wellness professionals and, and certainly the leadership team. So how do you sell it in? So you really, many of you are, are entrepreneurs like, you, like we saw, but those food service providers or catering companies leverage your existing contacts. You had a Rolodex of companies that you worked with pre-COVID and, and before offices shut down. That's a great place to start. They're familiar with their food. Uh, they've worked with you in the past and you've already got their contact information. So why not leverage it and start sending emails, uh, which we'll go through. If you don't have a Rolodex or you're just getting started, where it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> First and foremost. We've all been there and, and you've got to start somewhere. So something to do is, is or a good place to start is just Googling or use Google Maps and zoom in on whatever geography you want to target. And what's, what's one of the benefits of, of Google Maps is when you zoom in close enough. So first you find a building in your, in your territory or, a, or an office park. And when you zoom in tight enough, you actually, the, the phone number for the, for the office or whoever's in that building will pop up. And if it doesn't, I just stumbled on this uh, new website called CompStack. And if you go to CompStack and type in the address of a tall building, it will actually list out all the businesses within that building with, with their contact information. So instead of going there and, and going to each floor, you can, you can pick up the phone and call each of those and find the information there and it's all free. The next thing is you, want to, you need to identify who you wanna be talking to internally. So you can use a free tool like LinkedIn. There's, there's uh, pay for play tools like Zoom Info that are, that are fantastic for identifying individuals, but you can also just call the main number and the, the front desk person or the, the operator picking up the phone typically for a large office, they're paid to, to answer the phone. So what you do is you call them, explain, give a 10 second pitch of what you're, what you're trying to do and ask if there's somebody in facilities that's, that's available to speak to this or, or if there's an HR manager that would like to learn more about this. And typically there is. And what's interesting about a service like you're offering is everybody is interested in it. 
whereas the office manager is going to benefit from having fresh food on site, um, as well as the decision maker. And in addition to that, there's nothing better than meeting people in person, bringing a, a one page flyer of the, the, the types of food that you want to sell or the service that you're offering and handing that to people. And, mm -hmm. and having those in-person conversations are, are super valuable. For those of you who already have Kiosk Live, um, using Google Maps is so incredibly helpful because as you know, when you're out making a delivery, the closer those kiosks are to one another, the better it is for your business. Um, and oftentimes what we did was we would look at, if we had a client in this one office park, we'd zoom in on Google Maps, we'd find other businesses that were right next to them. And we'd use that existing client as a reference. We'd say, hey, we're working with Acme Corp, you know, just across the way from you, wondering if this could be a good service for your office as well. So what do you sell? This is where, um, this is where you really have the opportunity to shine and, and show your food and, and the capability that, that you have with this technology. So we make a deck just like this available to you through our through our um, through Byte Academy, Byte yes. Academy which you can get to through our website. Just go to our homepage and look for Byte Academy. Um, this is all it's free information, um, so you can access it there. Yeah, you download it, you upload some of your own photos, um, ideally, and this is what you're this is what you're pitching over the phone. Really quick use like before you dive into your pitch which is all of our tendencies is like we just want to talk ask them questions get to know them understand how employees currently get lunch at, at work or how they get breakfast and snacks understand how many people are on site understand kind of their natural rhythms are there do they have work from home on fridays particularly with covid this is a really good opportunity to get to know what does food at work look like for you today and in the next six months <clears throat> I think what is the what is the recommendation that your prospects should be talking like 60% of the time? That sounds right. Yeah. Ask questions. 60 to 62. <laughs> um, okay, so you want to set the stage and 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 really position this as is what are the, the leaders in their industry doing today? And everybody's thinking fresh food is is a universal need. Employees love it. Um, but again, most locations don't have access to it. So setting the stage for them, why, what are the benefits of having fresh food on site? Um, you know, like I mentioned earlier, their team will become more productive, happier, healthier, because they can, they can eat whenever they'd like. They don't need, need to leave. If they're in a food desert, maybe there's only fast food nearby. Um, those are not great options for, for employees and certainly not a benefit to employers. So um, explain why this is a win for them but also position them as not being alone. Like I mentioned earlier, most companies don't have access to fresh food because it's so expensive. Very few companies give away, you know, candy bars, chips, or, or free drinks, uh, because that's all that they, that's all that's affordable. Typically fresh food on site, if you're working through a catering company, is like $12 per person per meal per day. And with, the, with this capability, now they can have fresh food that the employee is actually paying for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think here it's it's um, building empathy with look I understand that there's probably a desire to have really great meals available for employees who doesn't want that but um, but it's expensive to do that and you're not alone most businesses are in are in this situation but hey they're what I'm providing to you really changes that it it makes it affordable to bring fresh food into the office now and then this is where you really dive into what you're selling. Yeah, and this is this is the big differentiator that allows you to put fresh food in their office, and that's the technology that that makes it super convenient for them. There's no build out, um, and their employees have have immediate access to fresh food just steps from their desk. So we have a question that came in, and it's a really good one. Damon asks, um, when you reach a decision maker over the phone, so you're cold calling somebody. Mm -hmm. Do you recommend trying to schedule a meeting to cover the pitch deck or do you attempt to make the entire pitch while you have them on the phone? That's a good question. Um, so when we were when we were selling this in for bite for bite foods, primarily we would make the sale over the phone. However, it does help to see the, the prospect in person because you can bring in samples. And typically when they see the food in hand, salad, sandwiches, or wraps, 
they can really differentiate this from traditional vending. So I would do kind of a teaser pitch over the phone. If you can get a yes, uh, which, which you typically can over the phone, then, then go with that. But if you, need, if you feel like you need to, to meet them in person and do a, a 30 minute um, pitch with, with your sales deck, um, the, your close rate will be much higher, but it's not necessarily, um, it's not necessary. Yes, I, Damon, the, do the teaser pitch. And if you can get a tasting, our experience was we closed 80% of deals where we actually brought the food there. Because if you're selling really fantastic fresh product, that's what sells it. The technology is in the background. It's, it enables you to sell your food, but it's your food that is the selling point. <clears throat> so if it's convenient for you to do that, cost effective to do it, close them, light close them on the phone and then go out and show them the great product. So it's, it is important while you do, while you are, your food is the, the primary focus of the call. It's important to talk to how the technology enables you to sell fresh food on site. So explain, it's as simple as swipe, grab, go. The employee walks up to the fridge, the door is locked. They swipe their credit card. That unlocks the door. They treat it like a normal retail experience where they can pick things up, they can put them back. They can feel confident in the product that they're buying before they buy it. And then they close the door and walk back to their desk. They can add their email address to get an itemized receipt. Um, but, but what this allows is that idea of instant gratification, where as an employee, you're sitting at your desk, you're working, you get hungry, you look up, there's a, there's a refrigerator stocked with really high quality fresh food that they can just grab. They walk over to it, they swipe their card, they walk back to their desk. It's of course, really high quality food because it's yours. It's, it's typically local um, and, and everything's driven by data. So, so you're not in that, in that space more than you have to be. You, you're able to see on the back end what needs to be stocked, what's selling best. So you're doubling down on, on the most popular, popular products and, and stocking less of, of the products that they're not interested in. So this is where you really focus on your food and really differentiate yourself from the other options available, which are traditional vending or like a DoorDash or, or Uber Eats. So with the slide like this, you'd populate your own photos, talk about um, how products are, are high quality, locally sourced, good for the employee and affordable ultimately. You wanna talk about your breadth of products and, and keep in mind, you wanna stock as products that, that fit as many day parts as possible mm -hmm. because, because you're selling into a captive audience. You want employees to come in in the morning, grab a breakfast roll from, from the fridge, come back at 11, grab a drink, come back at, at lunchtime and grab a sandwich or a salad, come back in the, in the afternoon to grab a drink and a snack. You're, you, you know, you're, you're capturing more day parts, you're increasing sales. And that's, that's what employers are looking for. They want this to be to be successful for you because that means their employees are using it and they see it as a benefit to themselves. So you want to sell the products that you think are going to sell throughout the day and be most popular in that location. Yep. We had another question come in. Um, how do you stop theft and vandalism and ensure they're being charged accordingly? So the the way bite technology works, let me go back to the, the photo of the fridge, is uh, by default the cooler is locked. In order for a consumer to transact, all they do is they swipe their credit card. At that point, the card is pre-authorized so that we know it's active. And then it's like the beauty of Byte is it's a normal shopping experience. It's open shelving. You can pick up a drink, pick up a salad, put it back. Um, once the customer grabs what they want and they close the door, at that point, the technology automatically knows what was taken because every product in that fridge has an RFID sticker on it. So the... Uh, it's completely checkout free. There's no honor system. You're not saying what you're purchasing. We're, we know what has left the fridge because um, we're able to see the differences in inventories during that transaction. Um, in terms of vandalism, typically people are placing these kiosks in locations where vandalism is very unlikely. I think in our history of having seen several thousand kiosks live, vandalism has happened maybe once or twice. And those are typically in kind of outdoor locations that have the potential for that to happen. Um, Follow-up question to that, what if they take the RFID sticker off or take the food out of the package and put the package back? 
Um, in terms of taking the sticker off, typically the stickers are either placed under existing labels so they can't be taken off. Um, and for those that can be removed, we'll actually be releasing a tamper-proof tag in the next couple of months that um, if you try to remove it, you're basically going to be charged for it. We've never really seen anyone take food out of the package and put the package back. Um, and I'll, I'll just add that, that a customer needs to swipe their credit card yeah. just to open the door. So just to access the, the RFID tag. So there is some accountability there and you can see through the dashboard, hey, who's opened the door and hasn't removed any products? They could be the ones taking the, they could be the individual that's taking the RFID sticker off the product. And then if it's in the workplace, you can reach out to your point of contact and say, hey, we have reason to believe this individual is tampering with the fridge. And then, you know, there could be some consequences. Handle accordingly, yep. So on your pitch call, the, the point of contact with the employer is going to want to understand the value that you are bringing to, to their employees. So what we saw over 500 fridges placed is about 72% of people that had access to the fridge used it on a regular basis. And when we, when we surveyed them, 90% of people said that the service allowed them to make healthier eating choices at work. Mm -hmm. So it's a clear benefit to the employer and people love the food. Our satisfaction rating was four and a half out of five stars. So when a customer closes the door, they're prompted to add their email address the first time they use the fridge. Subsequent times, it just auto-populates there for them. But in that email receipt, they have the opportunity to rate the food based on a number of criteria, but also add comments. And you're able to, as the operator, you're able to see that data in real time through the back end. And um, what we've seen is people love the food. They love the convenience, but also love the food. This, this uh, average client savings is, is an interesting one that we talked to you for the next uh, slide here. So the client, in some cases, you can pitch the, the clear return on investment here. So in the Bay Area, and this is likely the case in your territory, we, we know that the average employee leaves the office for about 15 minutes a day. And I'm getting in the weeds here in terms of how these numbers play out. Well, I think, let me, let me before you dive into the, the actual numbers, I think this is really important. If you are selling to an office manager, somebody in the organization who may not be the ultimate decision maker saying, I want to move forward, they need oftentimes to demonstrate the return on investing in a solution like this. And this is really the area of the deck or the pitch that does that. How you get to time savings is basically you're making an assumption that every time somebody buys from the kiosk, the alternative is them going out of the office. So whether that's 15 minutes that they've saved, it's five minutes that they've saved, if it's 30 minutes that they've saved, that's, it, it's kind of, it doesn't really matter. Um, the point is anytime they're shopping at the bike kiosk, the employee's saving time because it's so close to them. And so you go through how many people typically, um, uh, how many people are at this office location, right? This is the number of people that work at the prospect you're talking to. What they estimate would be the monthly participation, how often people are going to use it, and then for every time they use the kiosk, how much time are they saving? So you can literally have your prospect give you really pertinent data to your sale and then come walk away with how much time their employees will save by having this kiosk in the office. So they're basically giving you more information as well as demonstrating how value this, valuable this solution would be for their office. It's really compelling. It can be tricky at first, kind of figuring out how you talk through the numbers, but super valuable, particularly when um, this is getting sold higher in the organization. Do you want to, should we tap on this question? Did you see this question from Ryan? I did. You did? Yeah, okay. I'm happy to speak to it. Yeah. So um, Ryan asked, should, should he focus on these small offices within a building or focus on uh, getting in contact with the building manager and putting a fridge or their fridge down in the lobby or in, in higher traffic locations? absolutely focus on the highest traffic location. So what I'm gonna to get to in a, in a couple more slides is the opportunity to charge a monthly subscription for placing the fridge to the location. So there, there's, there's alternatives. So you can sell this into uh, the building owner or the, the property manager and place it into 
the lobby where you've got where you've got several companies funneling through and, and maybe hundreds of employees that are going to pass by the fridge on a daily basis. And um, there you'll get you'll get higher sell through. And I always I always suggest focusing on the highest traffic locations. However, if you do want to charge a monthly subscription for a service like this, um, typically the building manager sees this as, a, as an amenity that they don't want to pay for. So if you sell this into an office, they're more willing to pay for this because it's dedicated for their employees. And then oftentimes they can subsidize the cost of food in the fridge by, by a percentage as well to make it more of a benefit for their employees and, and more accessible for their employees. Mm -hmm. So I would start to answer your question directly. I would start with the building manager. And if, if you get pushback or you can't get a hold of that person, then start dialing and, and reaching out to the individual offices. Yep, 100%. So you also, what's one of the beauties about this technology and the service that you're offering is it is entirely turnkey for the, for the employer. In other instances with even traditional vending, you know, it's a, it's a big bulky machine, they need 220 volt outlets or, you know, there's, there's significant amount of time that, that it takes to set up. Our fridges are about 170 pounds. They plug into a 110 volt outlet. They connect automatically through cellular. So the setup is you know, five to 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. You wheel it into place, you give it time to cool down, you open the door, you place your food inside, you close the door and it's ready to go from day one. So um, so it's it's turnkey for, for the employer from like a delivery and, and setup perspective, but it's also hands off for them on, on an ongoing basis where you're managing the inventory based on the data that you're collecting on the back end. You, you know, your, your goals are certainly aligned or your interests are aligned with the, with the employer because if, if you're not stocking it with the right foods, the employees aren't buying the food and then it's, it's not good for anybody. So you want to you wanna make it clear that, that you want to stock the, the right food to get the highest amount of sell through. And that's a benefit for the employer because that means their employees are, are seeing this as a, as a, as an amenity, a tool for them, and, and you're ultimately selling more food. Something that we did at the end of every month was take the data, and this is when we were operating you know, several hundred kiosks around the Bay Area, we would uh, leverage the data and be very transparent with the offices that we serve, showing them how many employees participated. We'd break down how many salads were eaten, um, a, a big com component of our brand was selling local makers and supporting the local community. So we'd share how many local makers were supported um, and then how many employee hours were saved. The other piece of what we did was any unsold food, we actually serve, we partnered with a local food rescue organization and we'd always share how much uh, we were donating on a regular month. And that really made the businesses feel like, okay, I understand how this is getting used. I also see the value that I'm adding back to my, the community that I live and work in, in terms of the makers that I'm supporting, in terms of the food rescue that, that Byte was doing. Um, so this can be really compelling. And this is only possible because you're able to get this data through the, the Byte platform. And one thing we saw when we shared this with our point of contact on site is that that person would often share with the entire organization. Yeah. So everybody could feel good about Hey, I'm supporting this, these local providers right. and, and also want to continue to support the fridge. Yes. There's a question in terms of, do we provide data reports where you're able to see um, everything by the second? Yes, um, you're able to see a pretty broad set of data through Byte, transaction level data, real-time inventory, what was restocked, um, what was removed during a restock, temperature monitoring, uh, all the help of the sensors, all of that is uh, real time through the bike dashboard. And, and just to, to add on to that, the, one of the benefits to RFID technology is you also see the expiration date of every product in the fridge in real time without you as the operator having to input that those specific dates on your own. So the fridge automatically knows how long it's been on the shelf, how yeah. long things have been on the shelf, yeah. which is which is important when you're dealing with fresh food because you don't want any expired food in the in the fridge so um, like I said we were charging every location a monthly subscription just to have this service on site you guys can do that as well and it's a really unique ask because traditionally with with vending you're not able to do that because the food that that 
the chips, candy bars, sodas that are that are sold through vending machines are not a real benefit to the employer. Mm -hmm. Like I said, you've got companies like Google. If right? anything, they are a hindrance because it is not supporting employee wellness. The whole, the whole reason, I won't get on my soapbox, but the reason we started this company was to make healthy, fresh food effortless to access. Um, that is the base of this platform. And I think you're all here because you want to sell a fresh product. Um, this platform was purpose-built to do that. So kudos to all of you. Yeah, not only <laughs> purpose-built to sell the food, but to also make it profitable. Yes. That's, that's the important of piece. Course. So with traditional vending, you can't, you can't charge a subscription because the employer, you know, there's no real benefit to that. But with something like this, you've got Google that has to, or that 100% subsidizes their food. Most companies can't afford to do something like that. They, they choose not to. So an alternative like this is, is there's willingness to, to pay from the location. And some of the, some of the add-on benefits that, that locations can take advantage of are employee subsidies. Like I, like I mentioned, they can subsidize in a variety of ways where they can subsidize the entire fridge 24 seven. They can subsidize by time of day. So maybe they wanna support employees that are coming in early or staying late and, and the prices can just change after 6 p.m. and before 6 a.m. or whatever time they choose. They can also subsidize just healthy products, maybe just the salads or just the, just the kombuchas or just the, just the more perishable products. They can also create kudos programs where they, they're providing coupon codes to their employees to make the products uh, more affordable for them. There's a question, how much time or work is needed to add the RFID stickers and input the associated item expiration data for each item and machine? So the good news is that uh, I'll answer this in two parts because there's two parts to this. When you first get started with Byte, you add the products that you'll be selling. When you're adding those products, say you're adding a chicken Caesar salad, you input the shelf life. So if that's a three-day salad or a five-day salad or a seven-day salad, that just becomes a property of that product. Now, when you are applying the tags, and typically if it's fresh product that you're producing yourself, you're just adding the tag as part of your production line. Um, and when that, tap, that, that salad ultimately gets added to the kiosk, at that point, that, our technology knows how long that salad, that specific salad has sat on the shelf. That can be compared to the shelf life that was input in the dashboard. And we know, okay, if that salad has a shelf life of three days and here it's been sitting on the shelf for almost four days, you can surface that and know that you have a uh, basically a product that's past its shelf life sitting in the fridge and you need to go pick it up. The other piece though, I think the more important piece here is that because the platform knows that information, you can actually set up dynamic pricing. So let's say you want to automatically discount all of your salads as they reach one day or less of shelf life by 30%, you can set up that discount in the dashboard and the, the, the technology will automatically do the math, so to say. And for any product that has uh, a, a salad that is one day or less shelf life, it's automatically going to discount that SKU by 30%. Once that salad that's had that minimal shelf life is sold, that price will go back to normal, which is really compelling. Um, piece of the platform. And helps minimize spoilage as well. Um, there's a question, how do offices make these payments? Is it through Byte or a separate invoice? It's a really good question. It's through a separate invoice. So they're not paying us for the service. You're the company that's providing that great service to their office. So you're going to invoice them or charge their credit card on a recurring basis. Um, they'll charge, they will bill, or, sorry. They will pay you directly. And I think one of the big benefits of, this, of a service like you'd be offering over traditional catering is if they want to subsidize the food by, let's say, 50%, they're only subsidizing the food that is purchased through the fridge. Typically with, with catering, you've got 100 people on site, you buy 100 meals, some people aren't there, some people are, you know, they've got dietary restrictions. So some of that food gets thrown away. However, the employer is still paying for it. With the bite refrigerator and your products inside, they're only paying for those products that were sold through the fridge. So you can, you can export the sales data at the end of the month, see the discount that, um, that you provided to the employees, employer is paying for, and then invoice the client at the end of the month for the, for the difference. So at this point, establish the next step. Um, 
it's always a good, whenever you're coming out of a sales meeting, establish the next step. That could be a concrete date when you're going to follow up. It could be, all right, when do you want to get started? And just closing the sale, but always have that next action item. Um, and that, that could be, you know, the solution isn't right for that office. That's fine too, but because you don't want to be wasting your time with deals that aren't going to close, but wrap up the meeting with what's next. Well, we've got a question from Damon. Good one. It is a really good one. Do you want to take it? I'm, I've, I'll take it. And the, the question is in the beginning, would you recommend not charging a service fee in order to secure locations faster? Um, this is, this is actually precisely what Bite Foods did when we were getting first getting started is we didn't charge any type of service fee. Um, the, the barrier to sell was so low at that point because there, the, there was really zero risk or very minimal risk for an office. Um, and we got a lot of yeses. And I think the value to that is that we got data. Um, we learned the operations, we got data on really what was the minimum threshold where we didn't need to charge a subscription and it got our foot in the door. Now, six months later, we came circled back. We looked at kind of the profitability of all the kiosks in the field. And at that point we did, we went back and we said, you know, we really can't continue to service the location because we're actually losing money. We'd love to continue providing this great service because I think you're, you're having, you're seeing a lot of value in it, but we need to charge you a low monthly fee for us to continue. And I'd say probably 80% of locations were fine with that. And they transitioned to paying that monthly service because they, they saw the value at that point. Um, but ultimately it really is up to kind of your, your risk is probably too strong a word, but your, your tolerance for that. But also, also the economics of your business as well. Yes. And I'll, I'll just add, you don't need to charge a subscription fee. You can get creative. You can say, hey, the first two months are free and then I'm gonna charge $250 a month or $100 a month, whatever makes sense for your business. You can also say, hey, we need to be making $2,500 a month through the fridge. And if we don't, then the employer will pay the difference or, or a portion of the difference. So get creative uh, just to get your foot in the door and to prove the concept and, and to, to prove out how the economics work for your business. And then you can always go back to the client and, and negotiate some sort of monthly rate what we've seen is the fridge is very sticky. So once you put a fridge into a location, the employer or employees do not want to see it removed. Yep. Okay, so. Next I, steps. The next steps. Um, this is your call to action. For those of you who are, who are want to move forward, I think what, um, what we all benefit from is getting a quick win. Anytime you're starting a new venture or going into a new channel, aiming to have that quick win is really imperative. Otherwise, We've seen some people just kind of stretch out months on end and really not land a location because they're focused on the wrong things. So we really distill this down into three steps that are very achievable. First, figure out who you wanna target. So get out Google Maps, get out LinkedIn, list just start with the company level of who are the 10 companies that you think this is gonna be a runaway hit with. Step two, start reaching out, get, get a phone call, catch them on the phone, email them, but get them live in some way so that you can explain the value that you're providing. And then three, within the first two to four weeks, just aim to have that quick win. And that quick win could be, okay, I got my first um, in-person meeting where I'm gonna show them my products, or it could be I landed my first location, but aim to get that quick win really within the first month. Because I, I think what we see is you just get so many learnings by just having that first kiosk live mm -hmm. and you see, how compelling it is for these locations. I would add, can I add a step zero? Yeah. <laughs> step zero is you've got to prioritize this. So what, what I would do is add a block of time to your calendar, three to five days a week, you know, from nine to 10, I'm going to spend one hour every day reaching out to clients. And if it's on your calendar, then you're going to make it happen. So start with adding a block of time to your calendar, then reaching out to those companies, setting up phone calls and closing your first location. Yeah, okay. Um, we have a question here. We already have fresh food vending machines in many locations, but struggling during COVID to get into large companies due to employees working from home. How do you overcome this hurdle? Th that, I mean, that hurdle is the reality right now. I think the over the next six months, many offices, if they're going back to work, are going back to work. People, employees are coming back in the doors and things are restarting. 
And that's really where that window of opportunity is. You can't wait until they're all the way back because at that point, that office will already have their, their solution in place. So even if they're not there, they are very much evaluating solutions right now. And I, I would just add, there's immediate opportunity to put that, that fresh food vending machine into a higher traffic location. So maybe it's in the break room on the third floor right now, move it into the lobby. So those few employees that are coming through the office, 100% or everybody's seen. Yeah, that's true. Um, okay, we have one last poll here. And this is not a sales tactic necessarily. I think the uh, much of what Byte aims to do is provide information completely free to add value to our clients and to prospects that are considering this channel. And um, part of that is understanding what are the big blockers? So what other tools do, would you need to feel confident moving into this new channel? And I'll just add, we've got a lot of these tools. We just need to understand what to surface. Yeah. Okay. Any stragglers complete the poll? So there are a few stragglers. All right, guys, closing the poll in three, two, one. Okay, let me share the results. Um, so a number of you need your first location, a number looking at the financials of this channel equipment financing, a handful of you need products to sell um, or logistics support with deliveries. Few are ready now, fantastic. And then a few in this other category. Okay, this is, this is um, very helpful. Thank you for sharing that guys. All right, so to wrap up, and I think at this point we just wanna open it up for Q and A, but um, if you guys are, you know, still learning about the channel or, or want to learn more. As Lee mentioned, if you go to our homepage and click on Byte Academy, we've now made all of this information free and uh, available to anyone. This is where you can actually get a copy of that sales template that we walked through. You can download that. We have one pagers. We have the actual sales script typed out, really trying to do a lot of the work as opposed to making you recreate mm -hmm. a, a lot of the documents and processes that we have already created. And then follow us on social if that's your thing. We're trying to put a lot more content and tips out there as well. But without further ado, let's open it up for q and I'll just add while we're waiting for questions that we do have a lot of these tools. Like I mentioned, I saw a couple of people are looking for financing options. We have a financing partner that uh, we'd be happy to put you in touch with. So just reach out to your sales rep um, ask for that information and, and we'll put you in touch. Great. Okay. So, um, oh, okay. So for a new vendor, me, how do I handle the lead time between securing the first location and the delivery time of getting the actual machine from Byte? So Trish, I believe you are local, which is great because our, the kiosks are actually assembled in San Rafael, California, in the Bay area. Um, our lead time is very short. Uh, we're able to basically, from the time you pay for a kiosk to when it's delivered or picked up, um, basically one to two weeks. So it's a very short lead time. Um, a question here, what would you put as a minimum threshold of criteria for accounts to not charge a subscription fee? I think this really depends on your economics. I think so, as well as where that account's located. If they're in, you know, downtown metropolitan area, then you're going to look for a higher foot traffic than you would at, in like a, a food desert. And if there are locations that are not willing to, to pay a subscription fee, you can get creative. Like I, like I said, where maybe they're willing to subsidize the cost of food to make it more affordable for their employees and, and ultimately higher traffic for you. So if they're not willing to, to pay a subscription fee, ask for a, for a subsidy where the where the dollars that they spend go directly into their employees' stomach. Um, there's a question, and this is this is a great one. Um, well, they're all great, right? Why do you consider apartments, hotels, gyms, airports secondary? Are these less successful than primary locations? So, um, the to answer the last 
part of that question first. No, they're not necessarily less successful. I think what we've seen with apartments is you need a large number of units at an apartment for it to be successful. Just kind of speaking from experience though, we had a kiosk at a, a very large apartment building. I think there were 800 units in it. So pretty, it was 400 or 800, but a very large apartment complex, downtown San Francisco, right across from a market that sold a lot of the same products that we sold and it killed. I mean, it did over, it's close to $4,000 a month. So you can absolutely see success in apartments. Um, why we focused on offices is that there's very, very clear ROI for every office. When you bring fresh meals into an office building, you're delivering value right off the bat. Um, and it's really, a, that part of the pitch is a no brainer. So you don't have to justify that. With apartments, it's less so. Apartments may see, say, you know, you're selling your product in my apartment. I want to have a revenue share. Um, and so it's, it's a more of a hurdle that you have to get over than an office. Um, I, would, okay. I can add. Yeah. Uh, just the sheer number as well. I mean, we were selling into, into the San Francisco Bay Area where we, there were 15,000 businesses with, with more than 30 employees in the area. And just thinking about off the top of my head, gyms, you know, there's, there's maybe three airports, there's 150 yeah. hotels, there's 200 gyms, um, 500 apartment buildings, but that's, you know, that's such a small sliver in comparison to the number of workplaces and workplaces are often willing to pay a subscription fee. And Damon had a good question, kind of follow on question. How would you compare sales from an apartment location versus a workplace? They can both be incredibly strong. The big difference I think is in a, in a workplace, you are selling into a captive audience. So you're getting those, those sales in multiple day parts, like I mentioned. Uh, there's, there's often willingness to subsidize the cost of food. And uh, there is zero competition in a workplace. You are the only food source in that workplace where in an apartment building, you know, maybe, maybe your fridge is in the lobby and, and that's a fantastic alternative. But when they leave the apartment, you know, maybe there's a Panera Bread next door or a Starbucks down the street. Um, at which point you, you're competing with these other brands. Any other questions, guys? Oh, wait, hold on. I think there's some in the chat. Um, what is the average amount of foot traffic to be considered high versus low traffic? Uh, I wish there was just like a concrete equation for this. I would say for a location where you have to get in a car in order to get food, so um, more suburban settings, office parks, et cetera, that's like a hundred people, I would say. Um, that gets lower if the office wants to subsidize. For a more urban location, so your downtown where there's a lot of different food options, that gets higher to like 150, 200. Um, lower again, if that office wants to subsidize and bring down the cost of the food. Monica's got a great question here. Mm, yes. What are the best type of food items that you've noticed higher selling? Ready to heat versus heat to eat. You want me to take it? I think. So going back to what Lee said, think about uh, when people will have access to the kiosk. If it's a hospital, it's 24 seven. You wanna make sure you have uh, meals for every single day part, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, and those in between times. If it's an office where it's nine to five, uh, we really saw the demand curve look like this with the peak being at noon. Although breakfast was when like the diehards that would always shop at a key, at a bike kiosk would shop. So making sure you've got breakfast items and lunch, snacks, drinks, and then um, dinner was definitely a lower period, but you wanna make sure that there's items that can flex from lunch to a dinner time period. Um, we certainly the, the, um, some top sellers that come to mind, hard boiled eggs, in terms of volume, flew off the shelf. And that's because you can have them for breakfast, you can add them to a salad, you can have them as an afternoon snack. People that are trying to eat you know, cleaner, they're a good alternative. I would also add that hard boiled eggs are something, or breakfast at least, is something you can have the same thing or people have the same breakfast yes. item every day. Whereas yeah. lunch, you want more variety. But you also want to take into take into account like the type of location that you've placed the fridge. If it's a you know white collar higher end, they're looking for you know salads and and grain bowls and and kombuchas at least in the Bay Area. Whereas if it's more blue collar manufacturing, they may be looking for uh, wraps or sandwiches, iced coffees. Yeah. 
So it, it really try to add as much variety to your menu as possible and take into account the location that you're in and the day part that you're selling into. More variety during lunch and, and, and less during breakfast and snacks. Also, you mentioned last piece yeah. is you want to have the food ready to go stocked first thing in the morning, which means you can mm -hmm. do your deliveries in the middle of the night or you know early before people start showing up so you can get that lunch or the breakfast rush when people start showing up. And for more on that, operating for scale, we're doing another webinar that'll really focus on just operations of how you go from one kiosk to multiple kiosks, how you upsell accounts. Um, that webinar is coming up. If you go to our website uh, under resources and webinars, you can uh, register for that webinar. But there's a, a question from Damon, any recommendation on going from the end of a phone call to a next step to finalize the sale? How do you, how do you close, Lee? I think Megan brought up a, a great point during that questions slide is you need to, you need to identify clear next steps on the call. You expect an answer by this date, uh, you're gonna get them information by this date and, and ultimately close by this date. And if you can't get that, suggest an in-person meeting because like Megan mentioned, 80% of those in-person meetings, we were able to close when they could actually see and taste the food that's gonna be sold through the, through the fridge. And, and in many cases, the decision maker was in the room for that tasting. They wanna taste the food. So um, if you can't get clear next steps during the call, suggest an in-person meeting in the later, at a specific later date and then meet them in person and, and be sure to ask the decision maker to be there. Yeah, well, that's the other piece is I think the questions that you want to have in your pocket, um, ask who needs to be involved in your company to make a decision on this? What does the decision making process look like for a, a solution like what I'm offering? Um, what kind of criteria are you going to look for or, or consider? Are you evaluating other options? And getting those kind of level of details will also know, help you understand what needs to happen in order for you to close that sale. But, but ask the questions of does this look like a good fit? for your office, um, does it and, make, go ahead. Another very important piece is, I know we're out of time, but a very important piece is educating yourself on your own service and the technology. So you don't have to follow up with answers to questions that they have. They're gonna ask, you know, does it need uh, additional power? No, it needs, it plugs into any just regular 110 volt outlet. Do I, does the fridge need to be on our Wi-Fi network? Of course not, it, it connects through cellular. What type of food are you gonna be selling through the, through the fridge? Understanding that, what are the price points? What's the turnaround time to deliver the fridge? Those are all questions that are gonna come up during your sales meeting. So having answers to those, so you don't have to say, hey, let me get back to you on that. And then you could lose that connection. So answering all the prospects questions on the call and then setting clear next steps. Okay, we are a minute over. Thank you for joining guys. I really hope this was valuable. We'll be holding this kind of same selling the service content every single month. So as you need a refresher, or if there's other people that are joining your sales team, they're welcome to join this call um, as, as a, a complimentary training. Um, don't hesitate to reach out if you guys have more questions. Lee is lee at fighttechnology.co. I'm Megan, M-E-J-A-N, at fighttechnology.co. Have a beautiful Friday. Bye guys. Bye guys.